Sounds good. Oh, testing.
Welcome to this uh, Easter service today in this beautiful spring day. It's good to have you. And those that are streaming today, welcome as well. The, uh, are there, as you check your bulletin, uh, you can see what our calendar is for the next week. But if there's any announcements, I'll, I'll hear them now. <laughs> uh, we are we have cake after the service, so please join us in the fellowship hall. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? We have another birthday tomorrow too. The end. Birthday <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Anyone else? Scholarships are due, applications are due April 1st. <coughs> Anything else? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, today we proclaim Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We repeat our Easter shouts of surprise and joy again and again. For news of your victory over power of death and evil is news so startling, so amazing, so different from the news that bombards us day by day. Beyond our comprehension, you startle us again and again with resurrection life, bringing grace and hope and joy. You, in your risen power, are shaping all our days, and so we praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand as we read our call to worship, as shown on the screen up here. The tomb is dark, but empty. The stone has been rolled away. The burial clothes are put aside. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us worship our risen Savior. Our hymn of praise this morning is found on page 304 in your hymnal. Easter people, raise your voices.
with the Apostles' Creed as shown on, on the board. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, who will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of the saints, the resurrection, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As you feel comfortable, please greet your neighbors and pass the peace. Good morning, and happy Easter. I'm glad to welcome all of you here to be with us this morning. If this is your first time visiting, we do have Connect cards in, on the back of the pews. If you could fill one of those out, and please place them in the offering plate when we take up our tithes and offerings. We'd like to stay in touch with you. We have our prayer list in our bulletins. We have quite a bit in our bulletins. We have our Easter remembrances. So you can take a moment to look at those that are in need of prayer this week. Do we have others that we'd like to mention or praises or anything that's not already in our, as part of our prayer lists? No one? If there's nothing to add, let us come before God on this Resurrection Sunday. Lord, as the people gathered at your tomb to come and prepare your body, they found that the stone had been rolled away and the tomb was empty. And all had come as you had promised. You were risen. You were risen from the dead. Death could not hold you. The grave could not hold you. And in this moment, we celebrate your victory over sin and death and evil and we pray, Lord, that each and every day we walk in your ways to remember this, this one reason for our faith, that you have overcome that which no one before has ever been able to overcome. And you've made it possible for us to be united with God, to be united with you through your spirit, to bring all things new, to make us new creation, baptized in your blood, and redeemed by all that you've done for us. On this day, Lord, we remember those who need an extra touch of your love and your care. There are people who are suffering from physical, emotional, and spiritual problems. And Lord, we pray on this Easter morning that you raise them to new life. Touch them and heal them. And most of all, surround them with your love. Let them know that they are never alone, that all things through you are made new. For those of us here, we lift up our private concerns to you, those that we may not have mentioned out loud, but that we carry on our hearts. We remember our community and our state and our nation and our world, our families, our friends, and those who may be strangers to us. And yet we pray for people everywhere, that they know your loving embrace, that they know you by your spirit, and that they come to know you as Lord and Savior. Lord, we admit our faults and our sins and our misdeeds and that which we should have done that we've left undone. 
And we pray, Lord, for your forgiveness. We know that forgiveness was paid for this day so many years ago when you rose from the dead and then later ascended into heaven. For that we give you thanks and we praise you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught all of us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time our ushers will come forward, and we'll collect our tithes and offerings. All good gifts come from you, dear Lord, and from your blessings we bring this offering. Help us to use it for the furtherance of your purpose in this world and for the benefit of your kingdom. Amen. Now present the Eastern Cantata, Because He Lives. We pray that the music and the words resonate in your hearts and minds of the unfailing love of Jesus. I was impatient, I'm sorry. <laughs> the power of the resurrection began with the power of the cross. Jesus was despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and by his stripes we are healed. 
he was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. God made him who did not know sin to be sin for us, so that we might become the righteousness of God. God demonstrated his power in the Messiah by raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority, power and dominion, and every title given, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he gives us this same power, this immeasurable strength to us who believe. So let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith. Let us hold on to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful.
So if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in us, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also bring us life through his spirit who lives in us. And since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have also obtained access to God by faith in Christ. So let us rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. One day the wonder will become rapture when Jesus returns to earth, for then we will all be changed in a moment in the blink of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we will be changed. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God who lives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ.
Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, uncorrupted, and unfading. Because Jesus lives, we now have power, so in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Not even death or life, angels or rulers, things present or things to come, hostile powers, height or depth, or any other created thing will have the power to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord.
All right, give me a moment to change hats here. Thank you again to the choir. We could stop the message there, but being a preacher and only having one Easter, I'm going to go on. Today's scripture comes from John chapter 20, and I'll be reading verses 1 through 18. Before I get to the scripture, will you read with me, will you pray with me the prayer for illumination? Let us pray this together. Almighty God, through your only Son, you overcame death and opened us to the light of eternity. Enlighten our minds and kindle our hearts with the presence of your Spirit, that we may hear your words of comfort and challenge in the reading of the scriptures. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I'll be reading from John chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Early, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went over to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as of yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that she had said, and she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. I can't remember where I came across this quote, but I found it to be pretty true, and it's helped me through some dark and difficult times. The quote says, it is always darkest just before the day dawns. It is always darkest just before the day dawns. I had to go back and look up who actually made that quote. And it was by a 17th century author, so in the 1600s, this author named Thomas Fuller. It is, quote, always, it is always darkest just before the day dawns. Thomas Fuller was an author in the 1600s writing for the British population about the Holy Land. And so he wanted to describe what the Holy Land looked like, what was going on there. Remember, this is the 1600s, and, and, and when he was discussing day and night, what, what is day like? What is night like there? He said, it is always darkest 
just before the day dawns. Now, I get he's talking about the physical characteristics of a geographic location. But isn't that also true in our Christian lives? It is always darkest just before the day dawns. As Christians, we are not immune to the difficulties and the trials and the tribulations of the world. We have our own problems. We're not immune from them. We're not spared the dark realities. And sometimes it can get very dark before it gets better. Darkness. In the first line of our scripture, verse 1, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark. I really believe that when John was writing this, he wasn't just talking about the physical state of the time of day that it was. Of course, it was dark. Early morning is dark. If you're one of those early risers, just before the sun comes up, it is dark. But he's also talking about a special time in the lives of the disciples and all those who knew of Jesus. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark. Early on the first day of the week, while it was hopeless. Early on the first day of the week, while it seemed like there was no positive end in sight. Early on the first day of the week, when darkness seemed to be winning. Darkness and light, darkness versus light, is a huge theme in the Gospel of John. There are other themes, but one of the huge, biggest themes in the Gospel of John is darkness and light. Before Mary and the disciples saw the risen Jesus, while it was still dark, just before the dawn, it was physically dark and it was also emotionally and spiritually dark because they thought they had lost Jesus forever. And then comes the dawn. Then comes that speck of light. Then comes the light that shines in the darkness. And the universe would never be the same. Mary Magdalene comes to the tomb, and she sees that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb. Suddenly, the light starts to appear. You know, over the centuries, over the, the millennia, people have traditionally feared the dark. Remember being a child or, or having a child? What is the hardest part about them going to bed at night? It's they're afraid of the dark. They want a flashlight or, or some way to show, see that they can see even just a little bit. If we're honest with ourselves, we don't like to be in strange places in the dark. If you go on vacation, you're staying in a hotel room. Many of us will leave like the bathroom light on or, or the TV on, and we'll leave something on because we're in a strange place and we don't like the dark. Over the millennia, people have feared the dark, and yet God does his best work while it is still dark. And we see the results when the morning comes. Take, for example, the first chapter, the first verse of the entire Bible. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. From the first verse in the Bible to the last chapter, in the Bible. Revelation chapter 22, when John, the, when John is writing about the new heaven and the new earth, he says, there will be no more night. There will be no more night. They, excuse me, they will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light. God does his best work in the darkness, and we see it in the light. In between Genesis 1 and Revelation 22, there's a whole lot of Bible in there. There's a lot of stories about God's work among the people, or even despite the people. When Israel 
was in the darkness of slavery, God called Moses and freed them. While Israel was still in the darkness of wandering the desert, God appeared as a pillar of smoke and fire to lead them through the wilderness. While Jesus was still in the darkness of the tomb, God rose him from the dead. God seems to do his best work while it is still dark. Today is a celebration of that light coming out of the darkness, God doing that behind-the-scenes work, God doing that work when we think that everything is dark and there is no hope for tomorrow. God is working. Maybe you can't see him. Maybe you can't sense it. But morning is coming. Morning came on that very first Easter Sunday like a light of life coming out of the darkness of death. Take a seed Put it in the darkness of the soil. And it breaks through eventually as a plant to the light of the sun. If we die with Christ through faith, through repentance, through discipleship, we too will experience resurrection. Both figurative resurrection, as in we can win our battles that we face in life, we will come out triumphant on the other end. God resurrects bad situations into better things. And we also will experience a literal resurrection. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, our earthly bodies are planted in the ground. He's talking about when we pass away. Our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die. But they will be raised to live forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. Because Christ rose, we too will rise. Whenever it's still dark for you, today might be a dark day for some of us in here. Even though it's Easter on the calendar, the events of life don't take that into consideration. But whenever it is still dark for you, Take hope that God is working while it is still dark. Take hope that the risen Christ will raise you and you will raise with him. And then, through resurrection, just as Mary said at the end of our passage, we too will say, I have seen the Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 302. If you use the hymnals, we'll sing just the first four verses. If you look on the screen, it'll be up there. Christ the Lord is risen today. Will you please stand?
Don't look for him in the tombs. He's living and he's among us. And now, with the spirit of the risen Christ upon us, may we go into this world to love and serve God and our neighbors. May God bless you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And happy Easter.